Well, I love the show and what I've seen of it uh, so far. Um, I was going to begin by asking if you guys watched the original series for inspiration, because obviously I'm I'm British, so it's such a huge part of our kind of culture growing up. I'd wondered if you went back to watch the original uh, Russell T Davis um, version to to help sort of get your head around the the world you were set to inhabit. I sure did. That was like the first thing I did once I I ended up booking this. I was one year old when the original came out. They're so. really young. That's a flex. They're really young. Yeah, I'll tell anyone who will listen. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. No, I did watch it. I watched the whole uh UK season and such a big fan of Russell T Davies in in particular. I loved It's a Sin as well. So it's really cool to be a part of that legacy. Yeah, I'm a pinch older than Finn, not by much. That's cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw actually the US version when I was 12 in the closet, horny as G damn hell. And uh, I remember watching it being very titillated, and it was very a whole new world. Um, and so, but you know, I, I, you know, also metabolized this message of, okay, being queer and disabled, is going to be a little bit of a journey for me. Uh, so it meant so much to be a part of the reboot because 12 year old me would have been obsessed to know that, uh, there was going to be a reboot in 22 years when Hollywood would have, uh, ran out of all original ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it paved the way for, uh, us to break ground yes. in, in a new, more modern way. Yeah. Uh, you know, reflects where queerness is at in modern times. Mm. So had you guys had much experience playing gay characters in in, in TV or in film? And, and if not, how, how was that sort of experience for you? Literally never. Mm. I've always played a, a straight boy next door. Flax. <laughs> yeah, I don't Flax. know. Flax, okay, giving mask, okay. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I had it. So it was pretty exciting to not have to hold my breath on set you know, I, uh, and it's always like but an accepting, yeah, metaphorically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not because of like COVID or anything. <laughs> um, no, but it, I mean, I feel like I've always sort of had to watch my step, you know, in work environments, especially when I'm playing this like straight boy next door character type. Um, but yeah, no, this was an, an environment which I felt my, my queerness was not only accepted, but also encouraged. And it was an asset to my storytelling, which I believe all the time, but um, it's maybe not apparent that a production thinks the same way. Yeah. And after playing straight for 17 years, I decided never again. Um, so <laughs> I only play gay. Nice. Yeah. Proud of you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Finn, you were saying about, you know, you have to sort of watch, felt you have to watch your step playing a sort of a straight character. Did you think now if you were to play a straight character in a show that it, having had this experience, you would have, that's changed your perspective and it might change the way you approach the role? Well, I mean, I was always open about who I was. It wasn't like I was uh, not being honest. It was just more so being uh mindful of how other people were perceiving me. Um, not It wouldn't change my behavior, but I needed to know my level of, of security in the environment I was in. And I just didn't have to think about that at all on the queerest folk side because I was surrounded by so much queerness. And I knew without a shadow of a doubt, if, uh, like if someone wasn't automatically just super encouraging of my queerness, they were in the minority and it would be strange for them not Mm -hmm. to be, you know? So, but it's just the opposite. I'm normally the minority, you know, like, token queer person on a set and it's just a different experience not that it's it's better or worse i definitely have uh, a lot of fun on a set surrounded by queer people um yeah i i like i just like my job You can tell, I mean, that fun just came through the screen. I mean, you could you could just get a real sense that you all just got on so well and you all had such a strong kind of camaraderie. Um, we actually did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Well, I mean, we didn't different. get along though. Man, stop. <laughs> well, I, I thought I thought Finn uh, hated me when we first met because we took an Uber back from our first cast dinner and I was like, hey, like if you ever want to hang out, like let me know, dot dot dot. And Finn did, was like, oh yeah, sure, uh-huh. And then like never fucking called me. <laughs> never called me. And no, then I, I and then I tried one more time. I was like, I read this book, Horse Crazy by Gary Indiana, that I think you're gonna love. Um, you should, you know, I can stop by and drop it off. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, uh-huh. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, to be fair though, I just thought he was being nice. When he asked so me to crazy. hang out, it almost seemed like he was like, 
hey, do you like need someone to hang out with? I needed someone to hang out with. <laughs> and now I know. And now we both know that. Yeah. This is and now we this. actually hang out. Yeah. Now, yeah. We're, now we're BFFs. So yeah. We're also like off camera. Yeah. Getting- oh my God. Oh, shit, yeah. Like right. we hang out when it's not a press trunk, if you can believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as well, I mean, mentioning all the sort of wonderful people on the set, but I wanted to speak particularly about Juliette Lewis. Uh, what it was like to collaborate with such a such an icon of screen. She's very cool. She's very cool and also very nice. And I loved working with her. And I hope I get to do it a lot more. She's a freaking rock star, and uh, brought so much life to to Judy and to the Clark family household. Um, <laughs> yeah, all of my. I mean, I get to film a lot of really meaty scenes with her. And it was always fun. You know, even when it was like heavy and dramatic, um, she always brought a lightness to it that I really appreciated, Um, a sort of levity and um, humor. Uh, And it was fun to play off of that and sort of explore my more like the walking the line between drama and humor, which is what I I love to do. And so I got to learn a lot from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and while we're on the subject, Kim Cattrall, I mean, that must have been great <laughs> as Are you well. kidding me? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, she's been a mother to so many gay men for so long. So to have her actually put my real mom, um, or sorry, my TV mom, <laughs> lines get blurred. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. I mean, I was really intimidated because she's such a powerhouse. She's so talented. But meeting her was a dream. Like, we got along like a house on fire and... Um, I just, I don't know. I think it's, yeah, it's really good. I love her. <laughs> Finn, how was it doing drag? Was it your first experience uh, doing that? And was it, did you, was it quite hard? Was there a lot of coaching? I guess there's all, all the choreography and, and everything that went into it. Well, I mean, I didn't have to do my own makeup, which is a big part of drag is like learning how to do drag yourself. And I got really lucky because I was invited to do drag and just have like the best makeup and like costuming. And I got very lucky and I hadn't done drag before, not in the traditional sense. Um, I've done, you know, crazy makeup looks and, you know, put on a fun sparkly dress, but drag is like, you know, it's an art form. And uh, I was invited into that community, especially in New Orleans, you know, the Queens there really welcomed us all as Mm -hmm. a production and, and me specifically as a member of their drag community. Uh, so shout out to them, Lebeau Contraire, uh, Hugo Girl, uh, Vis Queen. There, there's some amazing queens, but um, it was so much fun. I love drag. And uh, I found that to be a, one of my favorite creative outlets. And I've since kept up with it in my, in my personal life. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> mentioned in my personal life. <laughs> my personal I've done drag <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> but you mentioned... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You mentioned the, the the New Orleans uh sort of um gay community. I wonder obviously I'm sure this is a, a show crew as fact that will speak to so many sort of gay community, uh, the whole gay community, I should say. But is it quite specific to New Orleans? I, I don't really know the kind of nuances, but are they quite are each community quite different from from the next in some ways? I think so. I well, New yeah. Orleans in general, I've never been at a place like there's no place like it. People say that and it sounds cliche, but it's really really true like it doesn't even feel like an american city really Mm -hmm. there's a sort of um rebellion and kind of a freedom there it's also people of all walks of life coexisting um it's yeah it's a frack on a lash that city it's a microcosm of, of america and i i mean like there's such a strong queer presence there and i would say like the fact that it's new orleans just influences it's uh it's it's a eclectic a eclectic yeah, eclectic eclectic um yeah. yeah it's uh it's individual um i really like the queer community there wow. yeah so many cute boys <laughs> 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 Stephen was saying Stephen was saying that when he was growing up Queer as Folk was his kind of awakening in terms of like TV in his youth what was your equivalent what was your Queer as Folk if you had one uh I mine was Perks of Being a Wallflower really I, that oh, was you the- are so young Jesus <laughs> Yeah, but I also grew up in a really conservative environment. Like, I don't know. There like was the, nothing... Wait, the movie or the book? The movie. Oh my God, lol. See, the, the book for me was formative. The book for me, and I love that you were like, yeah, the movie. no, for oh me, God, it was the movie. Oh my God, lol, the movie though. That movie is not good. Sorry. I, I like it, but that's because <laughs> I, get, I got to see, you know, this like version of queerness represented in Patrick's character. And, and that's something that I really related to. And I, you know, I'd seen some gay characters in television mm-hmm. and I was always like, I don't know if that's 
hmm, that doesn't feel <laughs> quite right. Uh, but then when I saw Perks of Being a Wallflower, I was like, oh, wait, that's an option? Like, that actually feels like me. So, yeah, that's my story. Okay. I accept IDK, it. HBU, I accept it. Ryan. Yeah. Um, definitely not Perks of Being well, a Wallflower. Well, no, definitely not. Um, <laughs> My, well, it was a different time for me. Uh, I, I Ryan Murphy had a show, his first show called Popular on the WB. There was these two characters, Mary Cherry and Nicole Julian, who were not gay men, but basically were gay men. <laughs> and one episode, they literally stole Gwyneth Paltrow's personal shopper and made him do a runway show for them. So it was like, I was 12 years old. I was like, why am I deeply connecting to these like popular teen girls who are insane and kidnapping people. And I realized, oh wait, it's called a queer sensibility. Susan Sontag notes on camp style. So uh, yeah, that was pretty mage. And then of course, like Will and Grace, Hobbs, but honestly more Karen than Jack. Mm. <laughs> being a wallflower, now I do feel old. Uh, fa- <laughs> but, fa- <laughs> but thank you so much for your time uh, today. Uh, and best of, of luck, please. Thank you. Maybe we'll catch up for season two, who knows. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.